This is A's Cast Live, your comprehensive look at the Oakland Athletics. Rooker, it's a fly ball to deep center. Robert going back at the track. He will turn and watch it fly. And 29 other MLB clubs. Adonis Garcia sends it the other way. That sends Carroll back. He's at the line. And the legend grows. Well, Acuna, another milestone in a truly historic season. Julio with an absolute nuke out to left. It's Glaber Day, and like a good Glaber, Torres is there. Join us as we take you inside the baseball universe, from humidors to stuff plus <laughs> to walk-off dingers. We have you covered. Spend your afternoon with us only on A's Cast Live. Here's Chris Townsend. Well. Are you there, Commander? Yeah, sorry. There we go. I have just been given breaking news. Well, this should be good. First of all, we're in Goodyear. We're at the Goodyear ballpark, which is really out here in the middle of nowhere. I mean, we are in Nowheresville Desert. Like, there's got to be bodies buried out here. I mean, if I had to bet, I bet if we we shovels in the ground, we could find some things. But I got to tell you, this ballpark, Goodyear Ballpark, is awesome. This is the home of the, by the way, do you like my camera angle? We're having to do it on my computer. Cody, let's just get this out of the way. You like the angle? Yeah, everything looks good. You sound good. Look good, play good, as they say for Link Soul. I, I said this forever. It's how you look. If you look good, you will play well. If your uni's tight, if you feel good, you will perform. You don't. If you don't feel like you look good, it's going to be a rough day at the yard. I'm telling. I got my. This is my special A's Pebble Beach shirt. I bought this down at Pebble Beach specifically for this show, as it matches your backdrop there, Cody. So on a day where I've run out of, I, I've run out of laundry. Essentially, I've run out of A's polos. I knew that this green, electric green, whatever the hell you'd call it, Pebble Beach shirt would fit in for any time I needed an A shirt. What do you think? I think it's a good look. I mean, we were just at Pebble, what, like a few weeks ago, watching uh, Wyndham Clark set the course record. Uh, not not a bad time, not a bad first uh, golf event for me to see a guy set a course record. Uh, six, what did he shoot? 60? So it was pretty impressive, but the shirt looks good. And uh, here you are in good year, getting ready to call A's Guardians. That should be a good time. Our old friend Stephen Vogt making his, making his debut against the A's. Well, not his debut, but his managerial deb- debut against the A's in spring training. This is one of my favorite spots because this actually looks like a spring training facility. Like Camelback Ranch and Talking Stick, they don't look like, you know, like we told you the other day. The Camelback Ranch cost one hundred and twenty-one million. They don't look like they look like half big league stadiums. This really looks like a modern, brand new spring training facility. It's absolutely beautiful, and obviously, it's the teams from Ohio. It's Cincinnati and it's Cleveland who share this facility. So when you pull up into this, is the great Alex Jensen was on the phone in Johnny Dosko's car. And these two brilliant broadcasters, as we said, hey, listen, we're turning on to Buckeye Way. And I said, you get it, right? Ohio, Ohio State, Buckeye. It it took the two play-by-play guys a minute to figure out the two Ohio teams play on (laughs) Buckeye Way. I'm not dealing with the brightest bulbs here. For some reason, to say strike one, strike two, that's a fastball in the outside corner, doesn't take great education, I'm figuring out, with these play-by-play guys. Is that fair to say? Uh, yeah, it seems like it. I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I I'm know. Not gonna, I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna check SAT scores with these guys, okay? <laughs> to say it's a routine grounder to short, obviously it doesn't take that that much. I mean, it's not hard to figure out Buckeye way for the two Ohio teams, right, Cody? Right? I mean, is it they are I mean, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Correct. I mean, I, I'm like the worst person to ask about that because I grew up next to Ohio, so I knew it was the Buckeye State. But 
I mean, a lot right? of people know, yeah, a lot of people know that they are is the Buckeye State. I mean, if you've ever been to Ohio, it's everywhere in that damn state that it says the Buckeye State. And, 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 and when you play football at Ohio State and you make a great play, they put a sticker on the helmet that's a Buckeye. A Buckeye. <laughs> now, obviously, St. Mary's, that doesn't say a lot for the St. Mary's education with Alex Jensen. Where'd you go to college, Johnny? University of Laverne. Oh, yeah. He went to Laverne down in L.A. somewhere, which I don't even know. Hey, well, small world, my, si- my sister-in-law went to that same university. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. That's the brilliance you have of AIDS broadcasting. Um, so break, breaking news today, we will be the only broadcast coming from this ballpark today. There will be no Tom Hamilton. Swung on in Belton. Friend of the program, Tom Hamilton. One of the great broadcasters. Has he been up for the Ford C. Frick? I think he was up for it this year. Yeah, and of course, I mean, he legendary uh, games that he did. For all those years on the Big Ten Network, uh, when the Big Ten Network started out, he did some big time games, uh, big time games on the Big Ten Network. So he did football, he did basketball, but uh, he's not here. They're not doing, I guess one of their broadcasters is sick. So there's going to be no television. There's going to be no terrestrial radio. Are we on the A's radio network today? No. No. So the only place, if something crazy insane happens today. The only place you can get it is A's cast. I made sure to update that on the uh, graphic that we have on the on the screen here that you can listen at athletics.com slash A's cast and you can listen, look up, uh, listen on the iHeartRadio app if you just search A's cast. So if you want to listen to the game, that's how you do it. Uh, athletics.com slash A's cast or go on the iHeartRadio app. It's free to download and search A's cast. And that's how you can listen to A's Guardians today. Come on up at 1205 Pacific 105 if you're in the great state of Arizona. Well, I mean, if, 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 if people from Ohio, this is the only way that they can listen to the game. I mean, if you want, we can start talking Woody Hayes, Archie Griffin. We can go into some great Ohio state Buckeye. I mean, we can, we, we can cover you there. Uh, I want to know how, um, I want to know how Ohio state's going to be Michigan this get, year. Give me Jim Trussell on the phone right now. Uh, well, we met the we met the coach from uh, Ohio State last week at fantasy camp because he knew um, uh, who did he recruit for to Ohio State? Uh, mate, Joey Estes, right? He was trying to he was going to see talk to Joey Estes, the coach from Ohio State. So we now have Ohio State Buckeye connections. If we ever want to, that's head funny. Up to that's, let me. Uh, uh, yeah, Damian Lesser from Castro Valley is now a coach at Ohio State. He. He played for my buddy, John Levine, who I played with at San Jose State, the all-time appearance leader at San Jose State, John Levine, who later went on to coach Castro Valley High, was the head coach for Brody Brazil. Jason Castro was one of his players. He had all kinds of guys and guys that played in the big league. So any of you out there familiar with – High school baseball in the East Bay, John Levine. So Damon played for John Levine, and he's now one of the coaches at Ohio State. So yeah, we were chopping it up uh, with an Ohio. Ohio State was here taking on. I guess Arizona State was hosting some college baseball tournament. So you're correct. The Buckeyes. Damon stopped by to say hello. We had played golf before. It had been years since I've seen him. So Damon Lesser, Ohio State Buckeye baseball coach. Stop by A's camp to see us. So, yeah, there's a lot of Ohio today. And I got to tell you, I've always, I think if you grew up in the 70s, I'm not saying you're a fan, but you do a lot about, and especially the A's, if you're an older A's fan with the A's taking on the Cincinnati Reds in 1972, and then after the A's dynasty, it's the Reds took over, right? The Reds won in 75, then they won in 76. Uh, swept the Yankees. They mauled the Yankees in the World Series. That's the famous World Series where they tried to compare Thurman Munson to Johnny Bench, and and Sparky Anderson laughed at it. And he said, hey, no disrespect for Thurman Munson, but he's no Johnny Bench. And everybody got, whoa, well, you can't say that about a New York, the Yankees. And then the Reds went out and swept the Yankees. Um, so the Reds were a big deal for a long time. And then the Reds and the A's have great history, obviously, 72 in the 1990 World Series. And then, of course, we're playing the Guardians today. And whenever I see Cleveland, it makes me think of our beloved Ray Fossey. 
knowing how much Cleveland meant to him and his career, as Ray was one of the great Indians of all time, now Guardians, but back Indians, and he's got his plaque at Heritage Hall. Um, and that's an area where they have in center field that they honor all the great players who played in Cleveland. So this is a really cool ballpark. If anybody, you know, when you're thinking about coming to spring training, it's it, it, it really feels – it's basically – a brand new spring training facility. It's not too big. The seats are all on the field. There's some luxury boxes up here in the press box, but it truly has a great spring training feel. So I dig it. And today what we're going to do for you is yesterday, as I was sitting at the game and thinking about preparing for this show, I was like, you know, we're not going to be able to get Stephen Vogt on the show today. He's on the back fields right now. But you know what? We just had Stephen vote on the show. And if someone didn't get to hear our great interview, which was Stephen vote didn't do a whole lot of media because, listen, you get the job. It's a new thing for him. You're not going to do a whole lot of media, especially at the winter meetings when you just get the job. But we reached out to the Cleveland people. Stephen knows us, obviously. I mean, God, Stephen Vogt was crying on the show as he was retiring not too long ago. We had Stephen Vogt when he was the quality control coach at the end of last year. So we have a I've known Stephen Vogt for a long, long time, is basically what we're trying to say. So Stephen, of course, stopped by our set at the winter meetings. And I want to replay that for you because it was a big deal. Because Stephen wasn't doing a whole lot of media, but he made sure to take care of us as you were. You were boosting with him at night there at the Grand Old Opry. Yeah, Stephen and I, uh, I've known him for a long time, too, uh, because of our old terrestrial radio days when he was a weekly guest on the show I produced. And we shared the same birthday. But, yeah, multiple nights I saw him when we were walking back from different places. Uh, there's Voter walking by. First night was with Jed Lowry. The second night, he had no idea where the hell he was going. I had to point him in the right direction. Great. Great Oakland A, Jed Lowry. Jed Lowry will always go down. If I did. Maybe someday we'll do a top 10 favorites. I can tell you what. The kid from Stanford, he's not anymore. Jed Lowry is one of my favorite A's of all time. I love that guy. Bright, super bright, obviously, a Stanford guy. But Jed was Jed was always a good interview. Jed was always a class act. And all Jed did was hit doubles. Double after double after he was he's you could make a case that he's the best double hitter doubles hitter in A's history. I mean he's got the record for most of the season. I mean Giambi was a monster when it came to doubles, but Jed Lowry was a doubles machine. And there was a time when Bob Melvin just put Jed Lowry in the lineup, hitting third every day. That's what you do. I mean, remember when Jed Lowry went to Bob Mill and said, hey, if you need – he's not a third baseman. But remember when he said, hey, if you need me to play third, I'll play third. I mean, Jed was, Jed was a great A. And I know Jed's going to stay in baseball in some capacity. I mean, he's made enough money. Obviously, he can do whatever the hell he wants. He loves to travel. He always had great travel stories. He and his wife, before they started having kids, would always do exotic vacations. I remember one year we went to Africa. But he always come back with these crazy stories. Um, I would love to have Jed back in the organization. What 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 did what did Vince Catronio call him? The Cage Whisperer. Yes, Cage I mean, Whisperer. That's correct. I would I would I would love to. Um, I'd love to have Jed back in the organization. I think Jed would be great inside the organization. He'd be he'd be great. Whatever could be. See, that's the thing, man. These guys have all made so much money, they don't need the jobs, right? So it's like, it's not yesteryear players needed the money. You know, yesteryear players made good money compared to the average American, but they didn't make FU money where they never had to work again. The guys that play modern day baseball players make enough money, they never have to work again. So they don't need to take on jobs and travel around the country. But if Jed, I mean, at least have Jed come back to spring training put the uniform on and let them talk to the young guys about hitting. Cause how many guys, I mean, where are you going to go for spring? Where are you going to go for switch hitting tips? I mean, Robbie Grossman always told us that if he had anything going on with his swing, Jed was one of the guys he'd always reach out to because he would work out with Jed down there in Texas. Like 
you need help with switch hitting and how to switch hit and how to prepare and how to fit, you know, what if my left side is going good, but my right side's not? Call Jed Lowry. Jed Lowry is like, when it comes to switch hitting, so I, I'd love to get Jed back into the organization. But um, back to Stephen Vogt, so you ran into him, and I was just thinking, like, it's it, we should replay that interview. Because, you know, on a day like this, it's pretty special because Stephen Vogt, one of our guys, I mean, Stephen Vogt is an Oakland A through and through, and he's now managing the Guardians, which, by the way, I've got a list. I I don't want to tell you yet. I'll have it in the broadcast. But I got this list of – they've had a lot of historic managers in Cleveland history. And um, I'm going to go through that later on today in the broadcast. But, I mean, it's a big deal. I mean, he's getting a shot. And I don't think, Cody, that this is a deal where, you know, you're replacing a legend. Because this is – to me, it's different. It, it all depends on, like, how it works out, right? Like. Jimmy Johnson replacing Tom Landry was replacing a legend, right? Because you were pushing Tom Landry out. Terry Francona, or like Nick Saban, like you got to replace Nick Saban right now. Terry Francona, health-wise, has not been good for years, right? We've known that. It was just a time where this is time, it was time for Terry Francona to go. 11 years, at his age, I I'm done. So it wasn't like he was being forced out, pushed out. So you knew someone had to come in and take over for him. So I don't get that sense. And the way that that last year did not go well for the for the Guardians and where they are, they're they're having they're another one of these teams that's having issues with their um, with their cable deal. I, I just don't get the sense like this is, oh, my God, you you got to replace Terry Francona. I just don't get that sense that there's going to be that kind of pressure on Steve Vogt. Yeah, he kind of talks about it in the interview about, you know, having to replace um, the culture that, that Tito built in, in Cleveland. But they have a young team. They, you know, Vogt is taking over a team that is now that now has the first pick in the draft this year. First time in Cleveland franchise history, they're going to have the number one overall pick in the draft. And let's not forget, we have another ace tie there. Uh, Ramon Laureano might be one of their starting outfielders this year for the Guardians. So not just Ramon, not just Ramon but you got Ramon too. Ramon Laureano probably, he's going to start a lot of games. I mean, at worst will be the fourth outfielder. Yeah, he might be their starting right fielder for all, for all we know. But yeah, so. I think, Brennan's gonna, I think Brennan's going to be their starting right fielder. Is he playing today? Yeah, Will Brennan uh, will probably be their starting right fielder. But. With that, you know, I always speaking of Ramon Laureano, I will never ever forget. And by the way, on today's show, we're gonna have Tyler Soderstrom, we're gonna have Jacob Wilson, we're gonna have Stephen Vogt. That's what we got today, right? Yeah, correct. Yes, and then Johnny, know your guardians, and then, and then know your guardians with John. Johnny's been studying, he's been on Wikipedia all day long. Um, he's 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 afraid of this, know your guardians. Do you have tough questions? Uh, here's a, let me see what I have real quick. I have it right here in front of me. Um, yeah, there's a couple. Uh, he can't hear us right now, hopefully, but one of them is uh, – okay. One of them is who does Stephen Vogt hit his final home run off of when he hit the home run against the Angels? Who did he hit the home run off of? He'll have – he has no shot. No shot. <laughs> Do you have the question, who hit two home runs off Bob Feller in the 1948 World Series? No, but do you want me to add that? I mean, I can. I, mean, I, I, I think I know the answer, but um, uh, Bob Feller, 19. Okay. Um, one of them is like, uh, who was the first ever draft pick in the history of the Guardians franchise? Got to know that one. If you don't know that one, if Johnny doesn't know that one, I'm firing him. That's Even what... though I don't have the power to do it. Are you under me? No, he's not under me. I can fire you. I can't fire. I may fire him. I may break ranks and fire him and throw him out of the booth. It's a what they call a lay a finger roll layup. Oh, uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's a couple good ones. Like uh, another one too is who won, who won the who registered the last win for the Guardians in World Series in the World Series history. So who's the last pitcher to get a win in the World Series for the Guardians? It would have been a reliever. Uh, no, actually, it was not. Was it a starter who came in to relieve? No, it was a starter that started the game. 
In that extra inning after the oh oh wait what? The last pitcher for to record record a win for the Guardians in the World Series. Oh, that's forty eight. No, a win. So no, it would have been it was, it was just a win. Yeah, just it was twenty oh, okay. sixteen. So I'm thinking. I'm, I'm thinking. Wait a minute. The Cubs and the the Cubs and the Indians went to extra innings because of rain. Yeah, right? they blew. Remember, Cleveland blew a three run lead. Cleveland's up three one, and they blew the series against the. Uh, so against did the- did Cleveland win Game Six? No, they were up three one, so they lost three straight. Oh. They lost games five, six, and seven, and they lost six and seven at home. Is this guy a friend of the program? He is not. So it's not Trevor Bauer. It is not Trevor Bauer. No, you mean the drone? That was the year he had the drone incident, right? <laughs> yeah. Because because they're bleeding. They tried to super glue it. If you're bored later on uh, on X, there's a video going around of him where he was like fi- doing like a sim game or like throwing pitches to a, like a barstool blogger or whatever, and the guy got two hits off of him. Like it was like a virtual reality kind of thing, and Bauer was actually throwing real pitches, and the guy was taking swings, and they were like using like some kind of technology. I don't know if it was like. Hawkeye or or Trackman or whatever, but he was barreling up the ball and he got two base. It said he would have got two base hits off of Bauer, so that's like a whole thing all on social media. Uh, big news today in the Bay Area. How are people feeling back there? Because I'm in Arizona, coming back tonight. We're back in action from the uh, A's Cast Studios tomorrow. Cannot wait to get home. Um, back to the Bay. I love Arizona, but it's time to come home. How's everybody feeling about Brandon Crawford being a St. Louis Cardinal? Uh, I saw from the stuff I saw, people are like, "No, he can't be gone. Bring back, bring back B. Craw." Oh, B. Craw. Uh, my friend, my friend, my my friends that are Giants fans are like, "Who cares? He was old. We don't we don't need him anyway." <laughs> Brandon Belt gone. Brandon Crawford gone. Oh boy. Pablo's back though. They got Pablo Sandoval. Yeah, Pablo's back. <laughs> Uh, what's next? Pat Burrell, Aubrey Huff. Who else is coming back? Well, Pat Burrell's on the coaching staff, so he's there. I mean, bring him back. I mean, I mean, is we're Pat playing the hitting coach. I think so. Yeah, remember, we're I think we're playing the Giants tomorrow. So someone better ask Bob Melvin this question in pre uh, the pregame and the media scrum. How could Pat, like, I, I'm very curious. Like, I, I don't remember the great bat to ball skills from Pat Burrell. I remember he had power. What was his career average? What is what is the Giants hitting coach's career average? Uh, Pat the Bat, hold on, pulling up his page right now. Pat the Bat is a career 253 hitter. 292 home runs, 976 runs driven in, an 18.9 war, and a 116 OPS plus. Out of? Bellarmine Prep. Then? Miami. The University of Miami. He and Aubrey Huff were uh, teammates in Miami. Yeah, I remember Burrow got real popular because of the whole Brian Wilson video. The U. Okay, so how much time we have? When do you want to get to uh, Stephen Vote? Uh, I figured we could do Vote around like eleven fifteen. So am I missing? Is there anything like yesterday? I mean, obviously Sunday was the Cody Bellinger. No, back I'm, in the Bay, we Brian, Brandon Crawford. Is there anything else going on? I mean, we talked about it towards the end of the show yesterday with the Margot trade to the Twins. Uh, Kike Hernandez is back with the Dodgers for like the 97th time. They got their super utility guy back, Kike Hernandez, who apparently the Giants were one of the four teams that were rumored to be wanting, uh, had interest in him while well, well, they missed out on him too. So Now, you might say, who cares, but it's guys like that that help you win World Series. Yeah, he's a. That's why the. That's why the Dodgers keep bringing him back. Him and Joe Kelly, they keep bringing those guys. He back. can hit. He can hit. He can play in multiple spots. Uh, one thing that I, I want to bring up before we get to Stephen Vote, uh, I I had to click on it. I thought it was going to upset me, but it didn't. Was Buster Olney did a piece on ESPN.com about the pitch clock a year later? How are people reacting? And it literally is hilarious how everybody overreacted, how all the bitching and complaining that people did. And a year later, now no one talks about it. He starts this article talking about Aaron Boone let off his talk about change and everything last year to lead his spring training. 
right? As this year we talk about Mark Kotze did it, and he was talking about Brent Rooker and opportunity. Last year, Aaron Boone let it off talking about change and changes of rules and how players have to be able to adapt. And, all. and now this year when Aaron Boone got up to talk to the Yankees, not one mention of it. That's how the article starts out. And remember, oh, my God, the injuries it's causing. So we don't call them you're going to the disabled list anymore. Uh, we'll just call it IL assignments. Okay. I uh, injured list assignments in 2023 for pitchers 405 times pitchers were sent to the IL 2023. Got that in your head? Mm -hmm. 2022 was 417. So all these people that tried to tell you that the pitch clock is injuring pitchers, there were less injuries from the year before. Yeah. So I read this article and I said, thank God. If this would have been an article, people are still complaining about it. You're so tone deaf. I mean, you're so tone deaf and don't get business if you think the pitch clock hasn't worked. If you don't think games being quicker hasn't worked, you, you, you're not going to get it. You know, there's certain people, kind of like you, Cody, that I just can't change. I can't change you. And these pitch clock, these anti-pitch clock, that you're not going to change them. But then again, they're irrelevant and they don't matter because clearly it's worked. And everybody who's sensible and understands what's better for the sport understands it's worked. And even this whole garbage argument about how it's hurting, it's hurting pitchers. We see less guys go on the traditional disabled list that you call the injured list now. So I, the argument is, if you if you if you don't like the pickoff rule, I get it. Like, could that be changed? Sure. Bigger bases? I don't. Johnny, you called game. Johnny, could you tell about the base sizes last year? Well, yeah, I was looking for it. But you can't, you can't like Johnny, Johnny is such a student of the game and was keen eyes in Major League Baseball. He couldn't tell that the bags went from medium pizza boxes to large pizza boxes. Nobody knew. Stop. We're fine. All right. Want to play this for you. Uh, Cody and I were lucky to be in Nashville for the winter meetings again. It was great to be back at the winter meetings. We've gone. Wait, we were in San Diego the year before, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. It was great to be back because the last one was in San Diego. It was 2019. Then COVID. We went last year, uh, two years ago, actually. 2022, December 2022 was San Diego. This year it was Nashville. It's great to see Stu there, as Stu is definitely going to get the Nashville Stars going at some point as an expansion. By the way, very interesting. I know it's a it's a very touchy subject subject in our fan base right now, but if you are interested, CBS Sports, go to cbsports.com. It came out yesterday. Talk, they did a full article about expansion. And it is amazing to me how the city of Sacramento, who, when we were there in December, no one was mentioning Sacramento, right? No. I'd never even heard. I, I thought Sac, like Sacramento, which obviously Sacramento does a great job supporting the Kings. All of a sudden, Sacramento's a chic pick for expansion out of nowhere i mean and we were december 5th 6th 7th whatever the dates were that we were in nashville we're there in nashville we're talking expansion everybody's talking expansion we have dave stewart a's legend A's hall of famer on the program talking expansion and nashville no one's even mentioning like salt lake city's a name montreal charlotte Let's see, it's Montreal, it's Charlotte, it's Portland, it's Salt Lake, it's all these different cities. Nobody's mentioning Sacramento. Now, all of a sudden, two months later, Sacramento's being mentioned all over the place. Funny how those things work. But uh, Stephen Vogt joined us from the winter meetings in Nashville. We want to replay that, that interview for you. Manager of the Guardians, we want to play something for you that was literally... Two months ago, 
It was two months ago at the Oakland Coliseum. I had them dig this up because I think it's absolutely – are we ready to go? All right, play it. Look at going forward for you. What have you learned where you go, man, I didn't realize the manager does this? Because you were so much involved, and like you said, it's almost like you were like a player manager at times. But what what have you learned from coaching, looking at the manager? I don't know, you're now the quality control coach. Like, what have you learned that you didn't know? The biggest thing that I is how many people are working behind the scenes to give the 26 guys on the roster everything they need, right? That was two <laughs> months ago. Right here on Ace Cast Live, Stephen Vote was talking about, you know, I'm learning a lot, being in the bullpen, being in uniform. And here we are. You're now the manager of the Cleveland Guardians. Wow, it blows my mind. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I there's even more people than I, than I realized. <laughs> in the it's how un- much? Just think about that in too much. How, in those two months, how much your life has changed? Uh, I mean, incredibly. I, it, the last five weeks, however long it's been now, month, um, everything's different. You know, the the family. Now we're going to be commuting to Cleveland. We're going to, you know, instead of driving an hour and 10, it's flying five hours, you know, so a little longer commute, but, um, just, I'm, I'm so humbled. I'm so honored to be given this opportunity to, to be given the chance to earn this opportunity. And I couldn't be more excited to be joining the Cleveland guardians. It's literally like you've been living at Disneyland. You've been living this fairy tale, right? The last AB, the ending of the career. Now you're getting a manager. I mean, it's like you've been living in Disneyland. Yeah, yeah. and I don't take it lightly. It's, uh, it, it, like I said, from the beginning, just give me an opportunity. Yeah. I just want to earn an opportunity. And, you know, I told Alyssa when I was coming to the minor leagues, I'm like, man, if I can just get to the big leagues and somebody gives me a chance, I'm going to do it. And, you know, and then I, I know I can coach. I know I can go straight to the big leagues and coach. I just, I know if somebody gives me an opportunity, I can do it. And, you know, and then just get me in that interview room. I know if I can get in that interview room, I can show them who I am. And uh, being able to have that opportunity and now to be sitting in this seat with you talking like this, I don't take it. I don't take it lightly. I don't take it for granted. I've worked. I've worked and worked and worked and learned and picked people's brains and paid attention all for building up to this. And now we're just getting started. And it's just been so much fun. And like I said, I'm, I'm honored. I'm humbled. And I couldn't be more excited. I mean, I'm honored because I think like, you were in tears. We had you in tears that last interview before that last game. You cried on this show. And then we think about that interview we just showed you. And we think about now and just to watch. I I I, I think of one guy because you know, Ron, you know, Wash, Ron Washington was here yesterday. The Angels didn't want to bring him on the show. They were like, Well, do it spring show. Wash went, No, I'm doing it. Yeah. And Wash came over and we we're I think about one guy who's really played he, he didn't end up showing but it really is billy bean billy bean what he did for wash in his career it's billy bean saw something in you brought you over from tampa and obviously being a two-time all-star and the opportunity with the a's is like billy bean it's like it's amazing how certain people can help shape what happens in, in someone's life for sure and, and and i can't thank billy david and dan and and that whole group and bob you know for giving me the opportunity to show what i can do and you know, obviously they saw something in me that uh, created an opportunity and, you know, and Bob always told me, he's like, Hey, go play, take it and run, see what you can do. And I've taken that approach. And even Scott service last year, he said, Hey, go take an interview, go see what you can do. Yeah. And gave me all the encouragement and everyone along the way has just helped shape me into who I am. And uh, I couldn't be more thankful. And like you said, Billy, being able to spot what he sees and the way he sees it. And then that group, it's, it's something pretty special. Now, when you start thinking about I'm the manager of the guardians, like, like, like getting prepared, I know you're going to hit the holidays, got the young kids, you're going to be doing all of that. But like, you know, before you know it, spring training is going to be here. What, like, like what's been the thought process? Like what kind of manager do you want to be? What kind of communicator? What kind of, you know, how, like, how do you want to conduct yourself? Have you thought about this? Yeah. I just want to be me. You know, yeah, I got a lot more on my plate and yeah. got a lot more responsibilities. And but I just want to be me. I want to be there for my players. I want to be there for the staff. I want to be there for the support staff. You know, I've said it a million times now, but it's there's 75 people a day that I need to make sure are feeling heard and valued. 
and I have that capacity. It's what I've done my whole career. And now I just have to make those decisions during the game and, <laughs> and get yelled at for it. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, I think for me, it's go be myself. That's what Bob told me. That's what Scott told me. That's what Craig Council told me. It's what Brian Snicker told me. That's what Matt Kuchar, all these people that have been huge influences on my career and on my life. They all said the same thing. Be yourself. Go be you. If you're not their guy, you're not their guy. But just go show them who you are. And and that's what I've done throughout this whole and will continue to do. And I got a really good coaching staff around me to make sure that I continue to do that. We talked to Dan Otero yesterday. Yeah. We had him on the program. It's great. The job that he has. I know he talked to you. Yeah. And um, how much fun was that? Like calling people that, let's, just not buddies, but calling people that you love, you trust. Because obviously that's what you need. Yeah on your staff what was it like making those phone calls it was weird you know it was weird to to call somebody that i am close with and say hey would you you know i can't, I can't promise anything but if there's an opportunity that comes up would you want to interview for a coaching job and you know hearing yeses and nos and maybes and but just putting that staff together and and getting those commitments from people to at least come take a chance was was really fun um and there's some tough phone calls right you have to make some calls to some people that you love that say hey i don't have anything for you this year and it's hard it's not yeah. e it's not easy to tell somebody you love and you want to work with one day that we just don't have anything right now and i'm sorry and but again that's part of the part of this it's just being me and i'm always been honest i've always been upfront and honest and always will be and um you know but dan otero you know he's very special to me and um you know, he still works for that other side and, you know, but uh, no, he's, he's, he's special. I'm glad he got, got a chance to catch up with him. Cleveland is blue collar. It's hard working. I, whether you're talking about the city, you're talking about the Browns, you're talking about the Cavs. It's just the, 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 the guardians. It is a hard working, hardcore sports town. It's I, I, you fit there. Like the uh, your career and how you went about your business and how you became an all star and how you your career it fits. Do you, did you get that like right away? Like this city because like Francona and the Red Sox and everything, but he fit in Cleveland. Yeah. I you fit in Cleveland. Yeah. No, I I feel that way too. From the first from the first hour of the interview process, I told Alyssa, I said, I think I fit here. I think this is a good place. These are good people. It's the kind of city where we we fit in. Yeah, it's very blue collar. It's it's take your lunch pail to work. It's grab your hard hat and you know and that's how these guys already play because Tito Tito had that in place. That's the beauty of it. Coming in inheriting this, I feel so blessed. And yeah, there's pressure and yeah, the t filling Tito's shoes. You can't fill those shoes. It's let me just try and see if I can put them on and and take a step. You know, but uh, for me, it's I do feel like I. I fit Cleveland and I couldn't be more excited to work with this group. This organization is full of phenomenal people and resources and I'm really excited to get to work. Yeah. I, I think about all the times you've played out these games in your mind. And as a catcher, you're always thinking about, I changed this guy. You, I mean, you've, I mean, now what do you think that's going to be like when, when you're now making those decisions, you're making those yeah. every day before the game, during the game and got to deal with it after the game. Yeah. Again, it's, it's, we have a ton of good resources around me and, you know, from the front office, from our analytical group and from our coaching staff, you know, we have, we looked it up. There's over, over 250 years of coaching experience on our coaching staff, you know, and 251 with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um but it, it's, that was a big year yeah, that it was, was a it was big a, year it was a big year but it's relying on the people around me to to help me educate and learn this is when you do these things and leaning on them but ultimately it is my decision and i'm the one that's going to wear it and it's it's ultimately on me but it's using all of these resources around me to help educate myself and what's going to put us in the best position to win and that's what i'm about all right, you have a unique situation that you're going to have probably for the next couple of years is that you've played against everybody. Mm -hmm. You've just played. If you take all, except for the young kids who just come up, you've done the scouting reports on these guys. You've competed against these guys. I see that as a major strength. Have, have you thought, I mean, yeah. you had have thought about oh, that, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think for me, like having that perspective and, and the scouting reports and all that, but also I played with young guys not too long ago. You know, our team in Oakland in 22, we had a ton of young guys. I know how they think. I know what's making them tick. I know when they're they're feeling like they're they're underwater. And being able to spot that and go put my arm around them and encourage them, I think is going to be huge. 
Yeah, we just had we had Johnny Gomes on today, and we were talking about 2012, 2000s, and you know, obviously 13 and everything. It's like thinking back on it, but you know, there's it just goes to show like what what you've learned. Like Johnny was talking about never in his life, you know, because in 12 the team was like 13 and a half games back and came back, you know. You know, four back with five to go, came back. Like Johnny says, it's distorted his view. Like you always feel like you learn things in Oakland that you may not learn in other places, that you're always in it. You always have a chance and payroll and all the excuses don't yeah. matter. Yeah. And then having gone through that and, and having those experiences is going to help me relate to our guys. And it's going to help me explain things. It's going to help me do those things that are unpopular. And, but Oakland, Oakland teaches you that no matter who's in the room on any given night, no matter who's in the lineup, we can go out and win if we put our minds to it. And taking that foundation that I learned in Oakland is going to help tremendously now that I'm in this position in Cleveland. And you guys know, I mean, you've essentially been the standard in the central, right? And the twins are kind of falling off. Um, their, their, their payroll is going to go down. And I know with Cleveland, it's just all about winning. Uh, you have to be happy about that is that there is a culture of winning that you're going into. Yeah, I am. I'm extremely thrilled to be joining that. And you know, the, the AL central is a battle every year. Um, but we feel like we're, we've got a chance and that's all you, you just got to get in and you know, and that, that message, once you get in, you get hot, anything can happen from there. Well, it's been an honor to cover your career, right? When you came over, I think about the the game winning hit against the Tigers. I think about first time we did the interview about you being an all star, and then about you being an all star a second time, and then just just your entire career and the thing we just did in the dugout, and here we are now. Your manager. It's been an honor to cover your career and watch you grow. It's been really yeah, cool. Well, I, I appreciate it. Oakland will always be home. It'll always be our baseball home. And uh, you know, listen, I. We, we couldn't be more thrilled that we're going to be playing in Oakland on opening day. And, yeah, I mean, that's the other and, thing. Too. I mean, right, right when I <laughs> we got, the, got, the job, got the job and we open up the schedule and it's like, holy crap, our first game is in Oakland. Are you kidding me? And it just made everything feel right. And just to share that that day with the people in Oakland and being able to be there. I mean, all of you are a big part of why I'm here. And I mean that wholeheartedly. And that, that goes for everyone that works for the Oakland A's from the front office to the staff, to the concession stand workers, to the security guards, to the media. You know everybody. I, it, it's its family. And I can't wait to give Eric a hug behind home plate before the first game of the year, you know. And um, it's just its one of those things that I, I couldn't be more happy about. How about when you're walking out to make a pitching change and the chant, I believe it's Steve <laughs> vote. I don't know. I don't know. I'm playing for the enemy. I'm, <laughs> all right. I'm with the enemy. You'll never be the enemy. Come on. Hey. We're so proud of you. Thank you. I it's really appreciate a, it. It's been a great ride. Yes, it And has. have have great holidays with the family, and then uh, we'll see you at spring yeah, training. I'm looking forward to it. The great Stephen Vote right here on A's Cast Live. How about that? How about that? I forgot that. I forgot we went like 13 minutes with him, because a lot of the guys we only kept for like five minutes because they were so busy. And Vote's like, nah, I can keep going. Say yeah. All right, hold on. I mean – I'm glad we did that because I forgot how good it was. Because when you're in that moment, I mean, we interviewed how many different people? <laughs> a lot. Yeah, I, like, I mean, you're just doing after inter you're just doing so many different interviews, and we were on four or five hours a day. I forget how good he was. I mean, yeah, think about that. Will we have the chance of I believe in Stephen Vote as he's coming out to make a pitching change? That would be kind of. I think it would be. I think. Great. Right. Oh, absolutely. Um, and that that video. If people miss it here, and if you're listening on Ace Cast, you need to get a chance to watch it. It's available on YouTube. I'll put the link out later today when I put out the link for the, today's full show, so people can go back and watch that. Um, that was a really good interview, and I'm glad we were able to catch up with them. So, kudos think, to about, you. think about this. There's 29 teams in Major League Baseball that we could have played. 29. And it just so happens, opening day, we're taking on Cleveland. I yeah. mean, seriously? Seriously? The way things work out in life, unbelievable. You don't tell me there's baseball gods. If you don't believe that, you don't believe in baseball gods, for God's sakes. <laughs> taking on Grant Napier, and if you don't like that, you don't like NBA basketball or arena football. But, yeah, I mean, come on. 29 other teams we could have opened up with, and we're opening up with Cleveland and Stephen Boat. Unbelievable. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be a great story. I mean, the Guardians flat out told me <laughs> when we were in the winter meetings because they were awesome. The the, the Guardians front office or um, PR staff is fantastic, and their head their head guy Bart came up to me and he's like, "Hey, you're getting him here. Don't don't even bother sending me an email for opening day. He's going to be so busy. We're protecting him." So I said, "All right, no, no worries." And I walked up to you and I said, "You know what? We'll get our good friend Stephen Kwan on then because uh, the Bay Area kid. We'll get him on because he comes on every year when we play the Guardians." So. We'll hold off on voter for the opening series. Maybe I'll reach out when we play them in Cleveland, and it'll be a little easier. More, you know, he'll be more uh, used to the schedule. But uh, it was awesome to be able to catch up with him. So we'll, we we will get him again this year. Just probably when we play in Cleveland. Yeah, I got a I got a stat on. Can we turn these? They, they got Johnny's headphones going now, right next to us. Um, I had a stat. Okay, you ready for this? Know your guardians. So this is this is a little tip for all of you fantasy baseball players. Now, Miles Straw, supposedly, I haven't seen him, but supposedly he's put on 10 pounds because he knows offensively he's feeble. But if you had to combine Miles Straw and Stephen Kwan's careers, now, obviously, Straw's played longer than 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 Quan, but in the last eight seasons, if you combine Straw and Quan, Quan's what? This is his third year, fourth year. Yeah, he's twenty. He's like he's almost twenty-seven. Straw's been around now for eight years. So, if you combine Straw's career and 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 Stephen Quan's career, how many home runs have they hit combined? Um, I'm gonna say because Straw had that incredible streak where he didn't hit a home run since like 2022 or something like that. Forever, forever. Uh, I'm gonna say they have like less than 23. Okay, I would say you're in the ballpark. Uh, 15. Is that too low? Too low. You're close. 17. 17. <laughs> 17. And this Will Brennan guy isn't a home run hitter. Ramon Laureano can get hot, but he's not a home run hitter. I mean, where 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 are you where, where are you going to get home runs? I'm I'm looking at their FanGraph roster resource page, and it has their projections for this year. Quan, they have him hitting seven home runs, and they have Miles Straw hitting two. <laughs> so nine home this, runs. From this, this, this Kyle Manzardo. Yeah, they got it from the range. Hurt. Who's gonna play first base? And you're gonna and you're gonna take Naylor, Josh Naylor, Bo Naylor will be behind the plate. He can hit, he can hit some home runs. The Naylor brothers can hit some home runs, but they're not prolific power hitters. And this Manzardo guy, he's a contact guy. He's not a home run guy. I mean, they made literally, other than J Ram, Jose Ramirez, who I think we can make a case for. Him to be a Hall of Famer with the new way we look at Hall of Famers, right? If we judge like your prime years, and you don't have to get to certain stats anymore, I I think Jose Ramirez could be a. I think he's. I think there's a good chance he's going to end up in Cooperstown. I mean, he has a 46 WAR, so he's already getting close to the number you right there, right? At. Yeah, only, he's 31, right? Uh, uh yes, he. He's, yes. he's got years left. Yeah, if you just look at his his first year he was an all star was twenty seventeen through now. Um, it's pretty remarkable what he's able to do. He's finished in the MVP and the top ten of the MVP one, two, three, four, five, six times since twenty seventeen. It's remarkable what he's been able to do in Cleveland. And this is when they were what, talking about how great Francisco Lindor was. What what uh what does he have dingers wise? How many home runs? Uh career wise, he has 216. Okay, so he'll get over 300 home runs. What's he in RBIs? Um, he has 746. All right, he'll get to over 1,000. And that's when you're going to go, that's a team stat. RBI is a team stat. Um, uh, what's, it's, what's his OPS? Uh, his career OPS is 854. And he has 200 steals, too. He has 200 steals? 202 to be exact to be exact. He is a sneaky good bad body guy. 
Uh, he was a 2020 guy. He had 28 steals last year. His career high is 34. He was a 30-30 guy in 2018. What, what's, his, what's his career OPS plus? Uh, career OPS plus is 129. So he's 29 above league average. The guy's going to be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, if you like, I said I, I was waiting for it to load. If you take career it, average, year, you don't uh, care about batting average. What's his career average? Two seventy nine. Yeah, this guy. I mean, he's only thirty one. He's going to play another what seven eight years, barring probably. injury. Yeah. So he'll probably get up where around over thirteen hundred RBIs. Once again, you call that a team stat. Um, I mean, he's going to have everything, right? I I and He'll probably spend his entire career in Cleveland, which always plays big for you when it comes to Hall of Fame talent. Yeah, if you take, for sure. And his if you take the last seven years and you average it out, he he's averaging 28 home runs, 89 RBIs, 23 steals, and he's only striking out 73 times a season for you know over those seven years and playing at 137 games is his average. That's pretty good for a guy that, as you said, a b- bad body guy, but he, he gets the job done at third base and he's – a perennial guy, a front runner for the MVP every year, if not in the top 10 for the Guardians. And this, remember, again, this is the years whenever they talked about how great Francisco Lindor was and he was the best player on the team when Jose Ramirez was actually the best player on the team and it wasn't close. So when it's all said and done, nobody's going to be Bob Feller in Indian history. Guardian slash Indians history. Bob Feller is the greatest Guardian slash Indian of all time. Where will you put Jose Ramirez? I think he, for position player wise, when you look at some of the greatest, the great players that they've had, you know, Tobin, is Kenny, yeah, but those guys didn't play their career. Yeah, Larry Doby, these guys didn't play their entire careers there. Where yeah. will he rank? Will he be the greatest position player in Guardians slash Indians history? I would say you have a hard. It'd be hard pressed to say he's not um, for what he's been able to he do. Stays there. his whole career. Yes, if he stays his whole career there, yes. Because um, there's some guys that were there for I don't know if Lap Lajoie spent his entire career with Cleveland and no, Sawyer, but so the, someone like Ramirez. Uh, I'd have to look. Um, let me see. I'll pull up Trish Speaker first. He ended up playing. Uh, I'll get it. But, yeah, uh, I think he could be the best position player to ever play in Cleveland uh, if he stays his whole career, which he's on that track to do right now. Because he's time you, know, next- you know who was on track to do it? It was unfortunate he got traded, but Joe Carter. Joe Carter was, like, guaranteed 100 RBIs, but he was a part of that, that huge trade where uh, Joe Carter went to San Diego. That's how Roberto – Joe Carter got Joe Carter got traded from Cleveland to San Diego, and then from San Diego to Toronto, and then went to the World Series. But if Joe Carter stayed his entire career in Cleveland, I mean, Joe Carter was an RBI machine. Yeah, he was also on a Sirius XM this morning with uh, Duquette, and I want to say it was uh, Jim Joyce was the guy, the show. So he's on Power Alley because yeah, Farron's, yeah, yeah. Farron's at Giants camp. A big crawl. Um, Lap uh, Nap Lajoie and both and Trish Speaker both didn't spend their entire careers in Cleveland. So Jose Ramirez could be the guy. I mean, you're talking about well over 100 years of baseball. So if we're missing somebody, but I'm, I mean, obviously Bob Feller is going to be the guy. Bob Feller is your number one Indian of all time. But if you if you like Guardians Indians history position players, when it's all said and done, Jose Ramirez is a is a Hall of Famer. He he'll be like. The, the franchise's best ever position player. Sandy Alomar was a great player. Our our good friend Sandy Alomar Jr. is still on the staff. He's on Stephen Vogt's staff, friend of the program. Las Vegas Stars legend, Sandy Alomar Jr. I mean, you're, you're thinking of the, the, the mid-90s guys like Tomei and Manny Ramirez. Kenny Lofton. Roberto, Roberto Alomar didn't play there long enough. Kenny Lofton left. They all left. Yeah. And even the guys after, when you're looking at the, the run that Cleveland had in the 2000s, you know, the aughts and all that and going towards now, I mean, a lot of the guys are pitchers. Like Corey Kluber was a great, was a great Indian slash, I don't think he was a guardian. Um, 
like uh, Grady Sizemore didn't have longevity, but man, if he was that healthy, he could have been a great player for them. But yeah, so you would have to say, I think it could be Jose Ramirez. Will Gunn is a great position player, and then Bob Feller, obviously, no one's going to pass him when it comes to overall, but it's, it's, it's crazy what Jose Ramirez has done. And remember, not every year Cleveland's had a good offense for him to be able to drive guys in, and he's still a guy that drives in close to 100 runs every single year. Yeah, and you're not looking at a great – we're going to talk a lot about that later in the broadcast. We're not going to bore you with it here on A's Cast Live, but I don't know how they score runs. I Steve I mean, Vogt. Team vote better get that Harry Potter wand and figure out some magic because I don't know how they're going to score any runs. Well, yeah, we remember when when they played the uh, the Yankees in the wild card series a couple of years ago. Remember how they weren't hit? They never hit any home runs, and they started hitting home runs. They have two guys on their team right now projected at twenty home runs. That's Josh Naylor and Ramirez. what about what about what about the playoff game against uh, Tampa? That's what it was Tampa. I thought it was the and they're yeah, Tampa. And, That's that same was, I was trying trying to help you out, bro. Thank you. But yeah, that same year that they were just hitting home runs when they were a team that never hit any home runs. So don't look for them to hit a home runs. But yeah, I I question where the they have three guys projected hit under ten home runs in their lineup right now, and Quan Straw and Brian Rocchio if he makes the team as a as a twenty three year old playing potentially playing shortstop for them. So it's it's, it's him or Arias, Gabriel yeah. Arias. It's one or the other. Because remember they don't because uh, what's his name's gone. The kid that traded um that was in the trade for Lindor that's now. I think he's on Tampa, the one that went to the Dodgers, um, blanking on his name. The Mets loved him. Not Jimenez, because Jimenez is a second baseman. Um, yeah, they had a of, it was a short one they had last year. Andres Jimenez. Andres Jimenez is a guy whose bat went. <laughs> all their bats went. <laughs> like Jimenez is a gold glove second baseman, but he can't hit. They have a, you know, they have a lot of good defensive players that can't hit. Like Miles right. Straw is a great defensive player, can't hit. Can't hit, yeah. It's uh, I was thinking of Ahmed Rosario, so I was thinking of. Yeah, they got a lot of guys that can play defense, can't hit. I'll tell you what, though, if they get in a fight, they got Ramon Laureano. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, if you get in a fight, there, I, I don't know if there's anybody in baseball. When, <laughs> one of the greatest moments in A's history, and I know a lot of people won't agree with this, but for me, was COVID, we're not supposed to touch each other, right? It was, like, weird. It's like, well, if a guy gets on first base, he's got to be next to the first baseman. Is the first baseman going to wear a mask? Is he, you know, all this kind of stuff. Players aren't supposed to touch each other. We're all freaked out about that. And Ramon Laureano, no one's in the stadium. And he challenges the entire Astros dugout. Oh, Centrone, the uh, hitting coach. Yeah, That was one of my favorite moments of all time. Ramon Laureano had had enough, and he challenged the entire Astros dugout. He wanted to fight them all. How do you not want that guy as a teammate? Well, they got him. I I with you on that, and they also have Naylor. Naylor's a big body guy too, who could be a guy you probably don't want to scrap he's a, with. He's a big bad body guy. Ramon strapped. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, if, if you look at the rest of their lineup, a lot of the guys are small. I mean, I don't know if Stephen Kwan's running out on the on the front line to come get into a, uh, a battle with you. Miles Straw might though. He seems like he's wiry that he can get into a scrap with Ramon. Hey, like I said, I was I was um, I don't know what what I don't know what the Cleveland off you know it's a Cleveland playing guardian is their paper. Yeah, I you know how we have like the Chronicle and then it's like SF Gate. I don't know what the SF gate is in Cleveland to the plain dealer, but I, I was getting ready for, for this show today and uh Miles straw, whole new workout program, put on 10 pounds. I mean, if that guy hits what he does defensively, see, I still like, see, I think you need a Stephen Kwan. I'd love for the, I mean, a Stephen Kwan is what the A's haven't had for years, right? A guy that, Gets on base by 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 putting the ball in play and getting on base a lot and can steal bags and play great defense. How many of those guys have we had? We were happy when to- Tommy Lastella showed up. Remember when Tommy Lastella showed up? And you're like, oh my god, a guy didn't strike out all the time. This is this is. I could just soak this in. Like Jed Lowry was that guy. Yeah, Quan's played. Those- 
No, I was going to say, Quan's played two years in the big leagues and won two, two gold gloves. I'd love to have a guy like that. Yeah, right? He hits, but he doesn't hit for power. But that's fine. Put power guys around him. But you need somebody that, you know, moves the needle, who puts the ball in play and makes stuff happen. And Stephen Kwan is that guy. You just can't have nine Stephen Kwans. Yes, that's what that's what their biggest issue has been the last few years. So it's now, as you brought up, and you guys will talk on the broadcast, is how, the, how are they going to score runs? How are they going to hit home runs? Because, you know, the home run's still the sexy thing in baseball. And they're usually at the very bottom or the bottom five of the league in home runs. So they got to find someone other than Naylor and uh, Josh Naylor, that is. And Jose Ramirez to hit home runs for them. And Manzardo could be a guy. I know he's a contact guy, but he might be a guy that develops into a 20 home run hitter eventually. But um, they got to find that power from somebody else. And maybe Ramon Laureano's that guy for them. If he stays healthy and plays all year, he could be a 20 home run guy for them. By the way, they're complaining that they had to use 14 starting pitchers last year. How many we use? Like 24? 24. Like, what? hey, don't be complaining. You got no idea. But that's why, I mean, Mark Kotze said, I don't know what Mark Kotze said today. We weren't there. But Mark Kotze said it, uh, said it best yesterday. Like, John Shea was like, so, because John Shea is in an interesting position because he's got to cover the Giants, he's got to cover the A's, and he covers the entire league as a national baseball writer. But, you know, he's got to be like, hey, the Giants – we're so into don't buy the whole we had to do it. The Giants analytics department loves the opener. Fact or fiction? Uh, fact. Fact. They had starters. They didn't want to use them as starters. They love. They're in love with it. So John Shea is like, so, Kate, what's your guys' plan? And Kate handled it correctly where it's like, I'm not ruling it out. There could be a time, a day, where we've got to staff it. According to my my old head coach, Sam Perraro, who you saw last night at the uh, at the arena there where Monday Night Raw, as my old head coach, Sam Perraro, is now in the San Jose Hall of Fame, along with the San Jose State Hall of Fame, along with the Mission College Hall of Fame, and the Junior College Hall of Fame. Remember, it's still called the junior college. It's not called the community college. It's the junior college. The ju it's still called the JUCO World Series, by the way. Um, so, yeah, my head coach claims he invented the staffing day way back when. But Mark Kotze, Mark Kotze is not he's saying, hey, there could be some time where we have to use it. But it's not going to be a part of our game plan. And nor should it be. We've highlighted all the different starters that the A's have. This should not. There may be some random day where we have to do it, but we have so many starters. I mean, Joey S is probably isn't going to make this team. If he's down in Las Vegas, do I want to see an opener or do I want to see Joey Estes? You would go with Joey Estes. And purely for the growth of our franchise. Right, I understand we want to win games, and we want to win games now, but we still got to keep our eye on the prize, which is becoming a good franchise again and winning games. A guy like Joey Estes, if I can get him a start at the big league level, get him up here now. Hell, I'm not saying Joey Estes can't make this team. I'm not saying Joey Estes may not play a big part in this in the future of the 2024 A's. I'm just using an example. If he does not make the rotation and Joey Estes is sitting in Las Vegas, don't throw me a reliever. Take that opener and bring me up Joey Estes, and I want to see him pitch. Give me Kyle Moeller. Give me what I mean. Give young guys opportunities to prove themselves. That's what I would say. All right, coming up next, who do you want to go? You want to go Tyler? Yeah, we'll do we'll do Tyler, yeah. You want to do Soderstrom? I mean, Soderstrom, this is uh... – oh, I got a – did I talk to you about what I did yesterday in the press box with uh, Jordan Diaz versus Jacob Wilson? Yes. Okay. Folks, there's a narrative that I'm not buying. And I'm going to prove it to you. But I'll do that after we talk to the former first-round pick for the athletics, the big left-handed swinger, Tyler Soderstrom, coming up next right here on A's Cast Live. 
Hey, Oakland A's fans, join your team this spring in Mesa. With nonstop flights direct from Oakland, there's never been a better time to head to the Southwest. Surrounded by this stunning Sonoran Desert, spring training fans know why Arizona is the perfect spring break escape. Miles of trails, shoreline, and sunshine combined for an unforgettable Arizona adventure. There's simply no shortage of things to do, see, and discover in Mesa. Get your visitor's guide at visitmesa.com. Ever since we got Xfinity, we have Wi-Fi all over the house, even in my hiding spots. Ha! Found ya. How? That's wall-to-wall Wi-Fi from Xfinity. Now through March 21st, get started with 200 megabit internet for $25 a month for two years with no annual contract and get Wi-Fi equipment included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Requires paperless plan auto pay stored bank account. Restrictions apply. Taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rates apply to internet service and Wi-Fi equipment. Actual speeds vary. This is Chris Towns, and there are two things that are a must for me, comfort and style. Whether I'm playing golf, going to dinner, I've got to have the right feel. That's why I've partnered with Link Soul, and you're going to love Link Soul. They have just released their new spring line, new fabrics for their polos, lightweight and perfect for technical performance. Link Soul also has new styles for their layers and hoodies with cool prints and seasonal colors. You know what they say in the big leagues, look good, play good. Go to LinkSoul.com. That's LinkSoul.com. It's almost that time again, A's fans. Spring training will be here before you know it, and the Oakland Athletics will be celebrating 10 years at Ho-Ho Cam Stadium. Now's the time to make plans to catch us in Mesa, Arizona, starting on February 24th, and enjoy the sunshine of your family and friends. Lawrence Butler, it's a fly ball to left field that's deep. Has a chance, opposite field, home run, Lawrence Butler. Grab your tickets early for the best seats at the lowest prices as your green and gold take on the Giants, Padres, Cubs, Angels, and more at Ho-Ho Cam Stadium. Don't wait. Get your tickets at athletics.com slash spring. That's athletics.com slash spring. If you're looking for a new mattress, Nest Bedding has you covered. Sleep on the same mattress Hall of Famer Ricky Henderson sleeps on. Nest Bedding is the number one brand of online mattresses and the Bay Area's favorite mattress store. Take home the Easy Breather Pillow. The New York Times calls it their number one pick. You can navigate their easy news website, nestbedding.com. That's Nest betting.com green and gold fans use the coupon code oakland and you get 10 percent off your entire order nest betting love where you sleep zach Gilloff joined townie on a's cast live and discussed his goals for spring training i think just uh keep building on on what i've done and, and just my routines and sticking to it i think um you know being on the field is, is super important um, that's the only way you can, you know, add add to the team. So um, for me, it's just going to be keep building on, on the routines that I think I um, found that worked for, well for me last year. Um, keep building on them and, you know, staying super competitive and um, try to have that winning, you know, baseball player mentality every day. You can watch the full interview at youtube.com slash athletics or listen at athletics.com slash A's cast. This is Chris Townsend, and if you're looking for a great place to eat and watch games, go see my friends at the Chicken Pie Shop at Walnut Creek. The Chicken Pie Shop is one of the hottest restaurants in Walnut Creek. You're not going to find a better menu, and come try their world-famous chicken pie that has been served in Southern California for 86 years. Spacious indoor and outdoor dining, perfect for your next private party or corporate event. Don't forget free parking. For more information, go to chickenpieshopwc.com. That's chickenpieshopwc.com. Nestled in the hills of San Jose, minutes from Silicon Valley, Cinnabar Hills Golf Club offers 27 holes of championship golf, a first-class pro shop, practice facility, and great food in the grill. This time of year also means family and business get-togethers. Let the folks at Cinnabar Hills make your event unforgettable while enjoying their award-winning venue. It's all there for you, championship golf, a great space for any events, and incredible food. See it all at CinnabarHills.com. That's CinnabarHills.com. A's Cast Live continues from A's Spring Training. Here's Chris Townsend. It's our last day in the Valley of the Sun, Commander. This is it. Well, we were, well, you were there for a while, but as a as a program and a show, we've been there for what a, over a week now, or a week exactly? Because Ray and I got there Tuesday, and we did everything last week until Friday, and you've been there through today. So yeah, it's been a very productive week for us. 
no nope. doubt. It, it is. Uh, it's Tuesday today, right? Correct. Yeah. So it's been a, a w- seven days exactly. I've I've literally lost track of time. Like yesterday, like I didn't even know it was Monday. Like I'm just I'm, every day is the same down here. Well, you've been there for it seems like a month. So <laughs> it's like, it's time. I miss my dog. I want to come home, be in my own bed. That's what's tough. I mean, being down here for because I came down early with the family, right? So I've like I've stayed at multiple hotels. I've been in multiple parts of the city. But I mean, to be here, I mean, spring training's great. It's really cool. But for the people that work the full time, it's a long. I mean, to be somewhere for over a month. It's like what Johnny talks about. You know, Johnny Dosco, who does such a great job for us here. I can, I can. He's not here, so I can talk about it. So he does such a great job being down here and giving us a credible broadcast day in and day out, you know, especially on days that Ken and Vince aren't working. And Johnny does such a great job being able to do solo spring training games is hard. And, but, you know, for Johnny, he's got to do laundry. I mean, he's here for like 33 straight days. So it's, uh, it's not easy being, I mean, we all like traveling and being on the road, but when you're gone for a month, I mean, there's 12 months out of the year. It means you're only home for 11. Not many people leave their house for a full month. That's a long time. Yeah, 100%. I don't know. I mean, the last couple of weeks I've been going back and forth to the East Coast and here, and it, I'm like, I'm so glad to just be home. So I can imagine, I can't even imagine what it's like to be there for a month plus like Johnny's going to be doing this yeah. year. No one thinks about that. Like there's 12 months in a year. A full plus month. If you're a spring training for you work for a team, you're gone from your home, your bed, your family, your loved one. You're gone for over a month. So that means you're back home for 11 months. You lose a month. Then what if you travel with the team? If you're also a person that travels with the team, you're gone half the time. 162 game schedule, 81 of the games, you're you're gone. I mean, you travel. People don't understand how brutal the travel. That's why I've never wanted to like sign up for traveling with the team. Like I love traveling with the Raiders. That was great. You know, you fly in, you're there for a day or two, you play a game, you come home. You're not gone for 10 days. I mean, that's a long baseball travel, especially with having children. I don't know. You know, I I needed to make sure that my kids saw me every day. And that's something that, you know, that's one thing, the big league lifestyle, that's very unfortunate that, you know, it's the time with your kids that you don't get back. And, yeah, it's great to travel with a major league baseball team, but it's a lot of family time. There's a lot of events. There's a lot of special things that you miss, and it's really, really rough. So uh, Johnny, Johnny being down here for a month is definitely key for us. That is cool, but it's not easy. So I'm happy to be – I'm on a flight back tonight, baby. I'll be back home, back in the friendly confines of the A's cast studio starting tomorrow for the rest of spring training until we start the season. Yeah, we got to make sure we we got to we got to get in there and fire those cameras up. It's been a long time since we used that 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 studio. And my one daughter has taken the heater out of there because it's still kind of, as you know, until the sun starts really beating down on uh, on the roof, that studio can be a little chilly. Yeah. Yeah, and the studio that I built. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to being back together and same same location and not different locations and lighting and uh, you know all that stuff. So it'll be. Did you, did, you, did you see who's playing third base today for the A's? Uh, I did. Um, it was. I have the lineup on actually going right now. Um, it is yes, Daryl Hernandez. 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 Um. What are the A's going to do at third? I mean, yesterday, Elemis Diaz made a brutal error yesterday, and I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, you, you really going to – Toro? T- t- give me Toro, Abraham Toro's best offensive year. Okay, hold on. Getting to it. Remember, he's still, he's still relatively <clears throat> young. Uh, young yeah, she's 27. Um, his best offensive year – when he had 375 plate appearances of 333 at bats, he had 239 with 11 home runs and 46 runs batted in. He had 10 home runs last year or in 2022 for Seattle and hit 185. So, so 
Abraham Toro's best year hit 239. How many home runs? Uh, 11. 11 home runs. Does that sound like a third baseman? Um, we no. already know Alatinus Diaz is not a third baseman. You're telling me Abraham Toro, 239, 11 home runs, third base? No. No. No, 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 no. That's just another, I get it, I. but no. If you're going to tell me you want to win games, you can't have Abraham Toro playing third base. 239, 11 home runs, not third baseman. Okay? So I'm starting to look around, and I'm saying, okay, let's do some lineup shaping and some lineup development. Well, what are you going to do with Brett Harris? Are you going to give this kid a chance or not? Who's my caller in Texas, the guy that loves Brett Harris so much? Isn't it Mike in Texas? Mike in Texas loves Brett Harris. Okay. But you know who I love? I love me some Daryl Hernandez. Ever since the kid, I got to meet him. Um, if he can hit, we saw him play shortstop the other day. Johnny and I did super athletic. Right, Johnny? This kid's super athletic. So I will take super athletic and can swing it at third base versus 239 and 11 home runs. Yeah. So, and, and you're going to tell me, think about this. Kind of like when you have two center fielders, do you have two shortstops on the left side? Because that's what Matt Chapman was. Matt Chapman's a shortstop who got moved to third base. Matt Chapman could play shortstop at the big league level. We've seen it. And everybody said, hey, if you want to go there full time, he could do it. Matt Chapman and Marcus Simeon were too short. Actually, you can almost say Matt Chapman was more of a shortstop than Marcus Simeon. But anyway. I mean, let's face it. How much shortstop has Marcus Simeon played since he's left the A's? Yeah, he's a second baseman now. <laughs> so, but with the A's, essentially Simeon and Chapman gave you two shortstops. How good would the left side of the infield be with Nikki, Nikki Pie Shop, Nikki Stickett, Nikki Pickett, Nick Allen? If you had Nick Allen at short and Hernandez at third, I mean. That's a lot of range. That's a lot of athleticism on the left side. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's eventually going to be the future, what we see. Then you get, then you have Galoff at second and Noda in first. That's a pretty good young defensive uh, defensive info for the A's, something we haven't seen in a while. And hopefully Daryl could, you know, seize the moment and take that job. Um, and then, you know, that leaves, you know, Toro and, and Aletmus to be utility players. But I think everyone wants to see Hernandez be the guy to takes over at third base because he's the guy we got – in the deal for Cole Irvin, and he hit really well. In or Brett Harris. Or, or, or yeah. Brett Harris is your traditional throw. I'm just saying, I know what Diaz, I know what Elemis Diaz is, and I know what Abraham Toro is, and it's not a starting third baseman in Major League Baseball. No offense, but that's not – you've got to put people in places to succeed. That is the key in sports. You've got to know what your players are good at, what they're not good at. Put them in positions that are best for them – don't put them in positions where they're not going to, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try and fit this here and fit that. We know that doesn't work, right? Alemis Diaz is not a third baseman. If you need to put him there every once in a while, okay. But that's not, that's just, that's just not. Abraham Tor, when they, when they got him, it's like, that's kind of like Jace Peterson. Like seeing Jace Peterson just brought back bad memories yesterday, right? Jace Peterson. Great guy. Great guy. Once again, none of this is personal. Like Jace Peterson, where were you going to play him on an everyday basis? Well, he's going to play some third. He's going to play some second. He's going to – come on, man. you got to get a third baseman. And you know what? Hernandez, Brett Harris may be the answer. Or you say, I'm going to commit to Hernandez now, put Brett Harris back at, back at AAA. And if Hernandez can't do it, I I know Brett Harris is going. Everybody goes to Vegas and puts up numbers, right? Yes, that's a that's a fact, right? So I know if I put Brett Harris in Vegas, he's going to put up numbers. So I put Hernandez there, giving him opportunity. And if that doesn't work, then you bring up then you bring up uh, Brett Harris. I mean, that's something I would do, and not be like, well, today we're going to have Toro, and then tomorrow we're going to have Aletmus Diaz. It's like, come on, that's, you can't do that. And it's a tough situation because you went out and signed these guys, so they need to be on the roster. So you got to figure it out. Yeah, like you, 
I mean, our highest paid player is the Letmus Diaz. That uh, that's a f- position player wise. Yes, that is a fact. Um, there is one guy I forgot though. Uh, Who's another making guy. more money than him now? Is it Wood or Stripling? I think Wood does. Yeah, I think Wood's like eight and a half plus his incentives, and Stripling's around there too. Yeah, uh, I forgot about that. My bus, but yeah, it- position player wise, no doubt it's Diaz. Yeah, well, a guy you're forgetting that could play third base or they want to play third base is Jordan Diaz. You didn't even mention him. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot about him. Well, there's a reason. Do we have time? Well, I'll save it for Jacob Wilson because I, 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 I compared Jacob Wilson. So yesterday, I was, li- I was sitting behind Vince and Johnny doing the game, and Vince talked about how young Jordan Diaz is. And I just I shake my head. Yes. If you look at the calendar and then you look at his birth date and you look at how old he is, yes, I guess you could say he's young. But then if you really look at the the history of the player, Jordan Diaz has been a pro since he was 16. And when you start really looking at opportunity, it's very interesting that these players that sign from Latin America at a young age – they get far more experience way faster than players do in the United States of America. And I'm going to prove it to you. So then you start to wonder, once I prove that to you, how young is the player? How young is he baseball-wise versus his actual age? Because I think his experience is far greater than what his age says. I'll prove it to you. But before we do that, Tyler Soderstrom, the big left-handed hitter, former first-round pick of the Oakland Athletics. Spring. Appreciate it. We got more coming up next, right? Tyler, how are you? It's been a while since we've seen you. Yeah, I'm great, man. Thanks for having me on. I'm glad to be back and ready for spring. So, what is this going into this spring training like for you versus what you had done in the past? Yeah, I mean, I think it's my it's gonna be my first spring where I'm here competing for a job, and uh, I think it's gonna be fun, exciting. Um, love where I'm at right now. Had a great off season, put a lot of work in, so it's uh, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, because in the past it was always where where are we going to put you? What level are you going? Yeah, it's not about the big leagues for you. Yeah, like you had you had that experience, you had that taste. How much did that change you? How much did it potentially change the way you worked out this off season? What was that like? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, getting a taste of the big leagues has been is it was great for me. Great learning experience. Uh, really opened up some eyes for me and kind of changed my mindset a little bit, kind of definitely made me grow up a little bit, kind of just got on a better sleep schedule, started eating better, body's in better shape. Uh, so, you know, just kind of all those things just kind of grows you up. It was a great learning experience, and uh, I'm glad I got to go up there and experience it for sure and uh, went in the off season and made some changes, and I'm ready to go. What are the changes that you made? Just like I was saying, my body, um, body feels a lot better. Uh, a couple swing changes, just some – a little small, and then uh, just just getting in good shape for sure. You look like you've gotten bigger. Yeah, definitely. Um, wouldn't say bigger. I think it just kind of cut a little bit of weight, a little leaner, a little faster. Uh, so that was kind of my focus going into it. Well, that you know, that's I, I talked about it yesterday. We're gonna talk about it again today, and probably for the rest of the week. Is like that's why it's so key for guys to get that experience. So. You, you get the idea. What's it? What is it like to play at the big league level? What's it like to play against these guys? To fly on the plane? To be to be around it? To get that taste? Because it, it does change you. Yeah, for sure. I mean, just like you said, all the things you just named, man, just makes you hungrier. Makes you want to be there for a long time. So, uh, like, you just open my eyes a lot. Um, kind of, it was just a great experience. So when I think about a guy like yourself, you haven't experienced a whole lot of failure, right? You dominate high school, you come in, you've done really well in the minor leagues. There was a bit of failure last year at the big league level. What was that like for you really to kind of taste that for the first time in your career? Yeah. I mean, obviously it wasn't fun, um, yeah. but I mean, it was, uh, it was a good, like I've been saying, good learning experience um, kind of definitely made me grow up a little bit uh, kind of in all aspects of life, like I've already mentioned. And then uh, just, think it was good I mean, you know i i think i needed that um i've struggled i mean i had some struggles in, in high and the first month in, in lansing um but this is was my kind of like first time really kind of struggling on a big stage kind of spotlight on me um so yeah just kind of help me mature grow up a little bit and just get ready for next year 
it's going to make you a better player. I mean, there's no question about it. It makes you stronger, makes you think about your weaknesses. Maybe yep. you hadn't really thought about and, it, and you end up correcting it. And that's how you get better. Like all the great ones have gone through it. I yeah. mean, our game works that way, unfortunately, sure. but you know, when I, when I think about you defensively, the one thing that we've been looking at is we know you're a good enough athlete that there's a lot of different places that you can play and your versatility on defense then allows you to get more at bats. Yeah. Did you think about that defensively? Did you work on multiple things, maybe a little more first base, or what did you do this off season to improve defense? Um, you know, I just catching wise, like, you know, it's just such a grind back there that you can't really do a whole lot to kind of prepare for that. You kind of got to save that towards the end just to make sure your body can hold up and withstand the, the long kind of taxing schedule back there. But uh, first base wise, you know, just, took some ground balls, um, basically just basic stuff defensively. But I think the defense just kind of takes care of itself for the most part. You obviously have to put the time in, but I think the biggest part for me was getting in the weight room, kind of becoming stronger in my core, kind of doing some yoga stuff, kind of leaning out a little bit. I think that kind of helps me defensively be more athletic, and I think that'll show this year. You're still young. You got to have fun. What was fun this offseason for you? A lot of golf in the beginning, um, some hunting with some buddies from home, you know, just – it's good being home too, being around family and friends. So uh, always good to be home. Yeah, that's something you got to disconnect. And yeah. I, 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 one thing that we see with a lot of young players is that as soon as the season's over, they they, they still are in the grind, and still yeah. want to be in the weight room, still want to hit, and they want to correct everything. Now, it's important that you realize, you, as you said, family time. You got to have a life also. Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. I mean, I I really enjoy going home and spending time with loved ones and playing golf i definitely took like a i would say a month off of just no baseball just kind of clear the mind and uh it was good and then i kind of got back in the weight room and slowly started the process of making some changes and it was good what about this spring what about this spring training excites you about what you're gonna do yeah i mean it, you just look around the clubhouse i mean it's guys that i've played with now for three, four years. I mean, we're really young, really exciting. I think we're all really hungry too. We've all got a little taste of it. And, uh, I think it's just going to be a fun year. Um, I just, you know, it's going to be pretty fun to be with those guys up there competing every day and trying to win a championship. I like that. I like hearing that you guys have been together because last year can't happen again. No, definitely not. Last year was not fun. Yeah. I mean, that was, I didn't get to experience the first half obviously, but you know, going up there second half and just wasn't ideal for sure. Yeah, so it's like this group's ready, and, and that's something that w what I've tried to tell everybody back home because whatever the narrative is outside of here is that there's a lot of talent here, yeah. and th this group's ready to rock. Yeah, I mean, definitely tons of talent in there. Um, I mean, I've seen it, so, I mean, we're all going to – come out and hopefully open a lot of eyes this year for sure. Well, I'll tell you what, everybody's looking forward to watch you grow in this spring training and be a big part of the A's in 2024. We appreciate it. Uh, you stopping by this morning and the next time we see you, yeah. we'll be in Oakland. Sounds good, man. Thanks for having me on. Have a great spring. Appreciate it. We got more coming up next right here on A's Cast Live. That seems like a long time ago we did that, but that was just last week. Yeah, it was the last, uh, I think, Tuesday or Wednesday, I think it was. Super early in the morning. I just saw Tyler walking around the clubhouse. And I said, like, hey, you got a couple minutes. He came out. Uh, I really want to see him take the next step forward because if he could do that, the, the the power, everything that kid has could be great for the A's. And that's just another great bat in the lineup for Kate, you know, day in, day out. Just got to figure out what position he's going to be. Catcher, first base, DH. It's not going to be catcher. Yeah, uh, we had two pass balls on Sunday, so it's not going to be. It's catching's not. They got to figure out a place to put him. We've talked about that. Um, at some point, you're going to have to figure it out. Catching is not where he's going to be long term. Shay Langoliers is going to be your catcher for years to come, and then Daniel Susak's coming. Let's not forget him, former first round pick. We saw him in the clubhouse. He's a big dude. I mean, he's he's of like the Joe Mauer, you know, guys that are like six five. He like. Both guys played quarterback. They look like NFL quarterbacks. Joe Maurer, who could have been an NFL quarterback maybe, and then Daniel Susak played quarterback. They look like that. Six, five, big men, right? So Daniel Susak's coming. Catching is not in the future for Tyler Soderstrom. They've got to figure that out. By the way, today's action as Guardians are starting to show up, A's are starting to show up, this is a great uniform game today. Our spring training – Yellow, uh, excuse me, gold hats 
with the green. I don't know what jerseys we're wearing today if we're going Kelly green. Everybody's got those gray sweatshirts on right now. But they've got a – the Guardians got a slick navy blue, red kind of spring training look to them. This is, today's a good uniform game. Good, good spring training merch today on the field. Yeah, I do like the, I do like the the uh, uniform that the Guardians have. Even when they were the Indians, they had a great uniform. They had always had, they always had cool hats, and then obviously the the gear that we have with the Kelly green and the, I do love the spring training hat that we have this year. I mean, I know we. I mean, enough, I'm looking at right now. A guy's got an Indians. He's got the Indians jersey on the Chief Wahoo hat. It's like really tough because a lot of their fans did not want to switch. I mean, yeah. it's, and it's and it's funny while people get political about it, but it's like. Florida State hasn't changed. The Atlanta Braves haven't changed, right? It's like certain people have changed, certain people haven't changed. It's weird. Yeah, it's a, the the Guardians made the switch a few years ago. That was funny because Tom Hanks did the video, and it's like, well, he's a California guy. But, yeah, they made the switch, and, and I still like the uniforms. I still like a lot of stuff they have, and you can still find some old Indians merch. Because yeah, why was um, – Tom Hanks is from Oakland. Why was he on the? He's in Oakland and li, he's from Oakland and lives in L.A. Why was he on the Guardians video? There was there was something behind it. I don't remember. It was a couple of years ago. I think it was explained on then when it was Twitter. Why? Because well, I know if, if you saw the movie Bachelor Party before yes. Tom before Tom Hanks became a serious actor, he is a comedic actor and his fiance is playing tennis and he keeps hitting the ball over the court. So his fiance's dad was like a doctor and they had this big mansion place. He's like, Cleveland wins the pennant. And he was doing a, but is that why he was on the video? Because of what he did in bachelor party? I, I don't think, I mean, that's a great tie and great knowledge, but I don't think that's what it was. Is that good, is that good Tom Hanks knowledge that, right there? It's one of my favorite Tom Hanks movies. <laughs> All right. So yesterday in the press box, you, you know, when you've been living in a hotel too long, you start using the hotel scratch paper. Yes. Well, no, but I'll paper. take your word for it. <laughs> like, I got, I got the Westin. Wait a minute. I got Westin. I've got Delta. I got Delta. The Delta hotels. In. So, you know, when you're writing your thoughts down on hotel scratch paper, you've been in a hotel too long. So yesterday, I'm listening to Johnny and Vince call the game. And Jordan Diaz is just so young. He's so young. Oh, my God. And I'm like, no, he's not. No, he's not. So I just did a little math. Do you know? Go look it up. Put up Jordan Diaz right now on, on Baseball Reference. I'll prove it to you. Okay, hold on. Jordan, Jordan Diaz, going into this season, he signed at 16. So it means he played He played internationally. What, is he Dominican or Venezuelan? He's from Colombia, actually. He's from Colombia. So he got at bats and then came to the States, played minor league baseball. He's had a lot of minor league at bats, a lot. And then you count big league at bats. Jordan Diaz has 2,400 at bats as a pro. 2,400. That's a lot. Yeah, I'm looking at it remember, right now. Yeah. Remember, they used to say that, hey, you need 1,500 at bats in the minor leagues, and then you're ready. He's had 2,400 at-bats, county big leagues, all the way to his 16. Yeah, there's also the uh, the fall leagues he played in, too. Uh, he yeah, so in baseball two. reference will count everything you've done. So now let me tell you, when you call a guy 23 and he's young and he's had 2,400 at-bats, really? Okay, let's take Jacob Wilson, who's the number one pick out of Grand Canyon. This is the difference between an international player and an American-born player who has to go through the draft. Jacob Wilson, since he was in high school, he leaves high school. He went to high school in Arizona, right? Yeah. All right. So go to Grand Canyon. He went to, high, he went to high school in L.A. Remember he played with Max Muncy? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, but his parents now live here. Uh, yes, because his dad was helping coach at Grand Canyon. Okay. So here we go. Jacob Wilson graduates high school, goes to Grand Canyon. We're going to count his Grand Canyon at bat. We're going to count his summer ball, wherever he played the different summer ball leagues you play in college. 
Like I played in the MLB Woodbat League in San Diego when I was in college, right? Everybody go, Cape Cod are the really good players. Alaska has the really good players. There's different Midwest leagues. All good college players go play somewhere in the summer, right? So this is going to count Jacob Wilson at Grand Canyon, his summer ball, and his brief stint in minor league baseball last year. Once again, Jordan Diaz has 2,400 at-bats from the time he was 16 to playing in the big leagues. 2,400. What do you think Jacob Wilson's at? Uh, less than 1,000. Um... 957. Okay, so yeah. So there is no way, no way that Jacob Wilson could ever catch Jordan Diaz in at bats by the time he gets to 23 years old. No way. Jordan Diaz right now has 1,443 more at bats than Jacob Wilson does. Yeah. That's uh that's pretty remarkable when you look at it. Tell me how many minor league at bats uh, uh, Jordan Diaz has. Minor um, league at bats. So this is not playing internationally, a bunch of young kids. He now comes over to the states and he's playing. He's truly, truly playing minor league baseball. In minor league baseball, so it says six seasons. He has fifteen hundred and eighty at bats. It's a lot. That's <laughs> a lot. And and he's got a ton of now. How many big league is that? How many big league at bats does he have? Uh, in the majors, he has 321. So, almost 2,000 at-bats, minor leagues in the states, and the big leagues. You throw in all those other bats he had internationally. Like, at what point do you say, where are we at with the player? We can't play defense, doesn't run well. You keep saying he's going to hit. He's he shown some flashes, the Yankee Stadium game. He shows some flashes. But how far, like how many, if if you keep playing he's young, my God, Cody, by the time he's 25, he's going to have well over 4,000 at-bats. Like, how young is he? I know, I know what the birth certificate says, but in baseball years, man, this guy has played a lot. Yeah, he has. And it's a good point looking. So my, so my question would be this. Should we still be acting like he's such a young player? It's tough. I would say no, but you. it's also – it's tough with him too because you don't know what position he could, he's going to play. I mean, he doesn't have a position. Exactly. Where You know Jacob Wilson could play short or maybe play at second or third. Like he could play – he has a defined position where Jordan Diaz really doesn't. So the question is how much do you invest in a guy? I mean, clearly you've invested a lot of time. And you continue to invest a lot of time in a guy that you don't know where he's going to play. He's not a great athlete. And you just have this promise that he may hit. And then all of a sudden, I mean, are you going to look up and he's 25 years old and he has 4,500 at-bats in his career? I mean, how many at-bats do you give a guy? Yeah. And he, I mean, if they really wanted to give him time and work with him, I mean, more time. I mean, if you want to look at it, he's not a free agent until 2030. <laughs> But I don't think you're going to wait till 2030 to find out the bat I mean, rates. <laughs> like seriously, is he really is he really that young, Johnny? Jordan Diaz. He's, 23. he's had 12, four. He's had 2400 at bats. You're you're to put words in my mouth, bro. I, I don't I don't remember saying he's super young. All right, we'll talk to Johnny in a minute. Or right, do we have Jacob Wilson? Yeah. I mean, Johnny took him diapers down there to the dugout. He thinks he's so young. <laughs> He doesn't need a crib anymore. You got to take him out of the crib and you got to put him down and say, it's time to walk, son. You got to walk. You got to go. Gotta son, go. Son. Son, 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 son. That's Johnny Gomes impersonating Lou Pinella. So, by the way, I, we could do a full show on Johnny Gomes, Lou Pinella stories. That would be, that'd be a fun podcast. It's hilarious. Who would have known that Johnny Gomes and Lou Pinella would hit it off so well. Like, you would see what Johnny and Bob Melvin would hit it off, but Lou Pinella loves Johnny Gomes. Son, son no, no, son, son. Because Lou Pinella, called, just like Bobby Bowden, called everybody by their number because he didn't know their names. Lou Pinella doesn't know anybody's name, so he calls everybody son. Yeah. <laughs> All right. He's your latest number one pick for the Oakland Athletics. Jacob Wilson.
It's great to have you on this morning here in Mesa, Arizona. This has to be like the best thing ever. Spring training for you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. It's right here in Arizona. I had three years of college here. Yeah. So it just feels Starred like here for three years. Yeah. 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 Right at Grand Canyon University. So it's been uh, pretty cool to be at home, familiar, pla- uh, familiar place. And uh, it's just really, really cool to be here. So you got, you still got all like your buddies here, right? Yeah. Yeah. All my buddies still play at GCU. <laughs> all their, they live all over the place. So. I get to go over there and watch them on the weekends, go see it, go catch their night games and just really watch them play now. So it's pretty, uh, pretty cool to be a fan of theirs now. Yeah. After you get drafted, we got to talk to you in Oakland. Obviously it's a different situation. You've now played a little pro ball. Uh, you're now here at spring training. I mean, you just get to kind of soak this all in, right? So like, what's the plan for you? Yeah. You know, I'm just here to really enjoy it. They told me to have fun, come learn from all these big league guys. You know, we got Nick Allen, Zach Geloff in the middle infielders. So I just, I come right here, take ground balls, when ground balls with them, and kind of just pick their brains on, you know, what they have to teach me that I haven't really learned pro ball yet. You know, you get a lot of information in college. I had two great coaches at Grand Canyon University, and then to come here and learn from these guys who are have played at the big league level already has been it's been pretty cool to talk to them and learn from them. So when when you're out here working out, you sizing everybody up. Going, uh, hey, yeah. you know what? No, not really. I just come. I just kind of come. Like, I would. Like I'd be yeah. like, hey, man, I, I may be right out of college, but yeah. I can play with these dudes. Yeah, I, I try to hang. I go out there and kind of get my work in, and try and kind of just be able to stand in, be able to not be, you know, outwork. Just go out there and kind of just work as hard as I can and just stay on the field and kind of keep up with these guys. So it's you're a, it's a first run. rounder, <laughs> man. It's like, hey, I'm not that far away, right? I, I'm trying. I'm trying. So it's a, uh, it's been fun. It's been fun for sure. Yeah, it's when you're invited, you're here to enjoy and, and work hard. And has there has there been anything that, that you notice? I mean, because this is basically your first spring training. Yeah, yeah. It's been I mean, I came out here, we started about two days ago, and it's uh it's kind of like that college feel in the fall where you're going out there, you have a scheduled day, you and uh you, it's pretty much the same thing every day where you go out, you know what you're doing, you know where you're going. It's it's pretty cool to just be able to kind of go to college and learn that there and then come here and kind of have that schedule base still. And then on top of that, be with a bunch of big leaguers. And, you know, that's kind of, that's the dream. Just be able to, like I said, learn from these guys. It's been, it's been a really cool experience. No, I, I we, we can't wait to see you up at the, at the big league level. And, you know, I think for a lot of guys where they may be uncomfortable, it might be real strength for you. The fact that you went to college here and that you do have kind of a support group here. How much does that kind of help you with confidence? Like this is, this is, home away from home really for you oh yeah you know it's it's everything i got my parents right down the street they they're gonna be able to come to every spring training game that that is happening and uh just be able to have them you know my parents have been everything for me throughout high school and college just my entire baseball career really just being able to lean on them for anything that i need in in my life it's been it's been pretty special to have you know such great parents such great family then like you said it's right across the street so i go home all the time i get to go talk to them tell them about my day and they're they're just awesome well, I mean, I think about Cody here. Cody, Commander Cody, grew up a Pirates fan. Absolutely loved your dad. Yep. So, like, when we think about your dad, I mean, one, a very, a, one of the most accomplished shortstops of his time, played in the big leagues for a long time. I got to interview your dad back in the day. <laughs> um, what is it? How much do you guys, like, talk about it? How much does he help you? Or is it at a point to where maybe – you just will run a few things by him. What's the relationship like now, baseball wise? Uh, it, it's every day, every day, everything that happened during the day, I run it through him. Anything that I, and I kind of felt differently. I mean, he's seen my swing for so long now that yeah. he can, he can tell pretty much at any point when something's gone wrong and he can tell me when to fix it. So it's, I mean, I run everything through him when I get home and tell him about my day and, you know, I had a couple bad swings. I tell him like, Hey, I felt this and he knows exactly how to fix it. So even to this day, it's in everything baseball wise that I need help with. I just run through him. He he's been so awesome helping me. Like you said, he played in Pittsburgh, so he knows he knows uh, you know what to do and how to help. So he's he's been great. How much did workouts change for you? Now you're a pro. Now you're going to spring training. Far different from college. How did ha- mentally, physically, how did it change? Yeah, and it went kind of mentally. It, like in pro ball, you're probably a little bit more focused than you are in college. You know, in college, not everybody has the opportunity to, you know, make it to pro ball. And then when you get here, everybody is just serious hard work. Like heads down, everybody's focused, which when you're around a bunch of guys who are focused like that all the time, you, you kind of are easily being able to be focused. So yeah. I think it just in college, you know, you still have that hard, hard working group. Like you all have one goal is to kind of make it to Omaha and win the College World Series. And then 
you know, once you get here, everybody has the same goal as to go to the playoffs and, you know, make it to a world series. So I think that focus group is just kind of, it's kind of huge at the big league level kind of versus college where, where it was just all right. And kind of in the mid major we did, we actually did well the last uh, three years at GCU, yeah. but then kind of getting here, it's every day. Everybody's always focused, which, you know, helps me as a player a ton being able to stay focused myself, man, the world's your oyster. You kidding me? Doesn't get any better than you, right? Yeah. Look at the grin he's got on his face. First round pick, your first spring training. Come on, it's okay. You can admit here, you you're, you are sizing everybody up. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm just trying to hang. Just trying to hang with these guys. It's been. <laughs> I know. I'm trying my hardest. So it's been fun. Well, you're the future of this organization. We appreciate you stopping by. We know you got some meetings to get to, but uh, yeah. good luck to you. And we Thank will you. hopefully. See you in Oakland this year. Yeah, yeah. No, we're, we're going to try. We're going to try and uh -huh. make it there. Well, hopefully, you know, if you see us, you're going to have that big league uniform on. Yeah, yeah. That'd be, it was going to be pretty cool. All for right. sure. That's the goal. Be well. Stay healthy. Yeah. Thank you so much. We got more coming up next right here on A's Cast Live. By the way, I got to tell you, Cody, that looks fabulous. Sun's coming up in the morning, Arizona spring training. We are just talking about it here. At uh, Goodyear Ballpark, nobody in baseball is putting out the amount of content we're putting out. Nobody. Cleveland barely has anything going on today, even broadcasting the game. You think we're doing a talk show, we're about to do the game on A's cast. Nobody in baseball puts out more content than you, Commander Cody. Well, I appreciate that. We wouldn't be where we're at without you, and then... And now we got Johnny, which this is like our highest rated thing. He has to suck up. He can never just take a compliment. Uh, I, no. I thank you, Tony. Thank yeah, you for yeah, wanna, understanding I what I do. That, Tony, thank I, you very I, much. I, I, I appreciate it. I really do. And I just want to say that this is our highest rated segment of spring training so far. It's only been one day. But uh, Johnny D segment is now officially taking over as the highest rated segment on this program. So we got oh, to keep it going. No. Your guardian slash Indians. Oh, but before no. that, so, Johnny, you guys yesterday on the broadcast, I mean, I was listening. And I just, at some point, you've been around minor league baseball your entire career. At some point, you have to stop looking at the birth certificate and you look at what a guy is, not, as we would say, in dog years, but in baseball years, right? You know how a dog is older Dog years are not the same as human years. So I look at a guy like Jordan Diaz, and I know, Cody, are you gone? No, I just put the full screen on you guys so everyone can see you guys, and I'm not in it. When you do that, it makes me think we've lost connection. Don't do that. It scares me. Um, it, you look at a guy that from the time he signed at 16 to coming over here, minor leagues and all of that, he's got so many at-bats. He's not – I get he, I get he's 23, but he's at 2,400 at bats. Yes. My whole point to it is, yeah, we were talking about how young he was, and but some guys develop at different stages, right? I mean, look, how many at bats do have in double A AA and triple A? He's got some at bats. There's no question he's about it. He's over 1,500. He does, but so maybe it takes a little bit longer. Who knows? All I'm saying is we don't, we don't know. How long do you give a guy? That's the question. Right? Because just, like if you go, well, he's now only 25, and I'm going to be like, yeah, but he's at 4,000 at bats. What, what is your point, bro? What's your point? Is that saying that he's 23 is not correct. It's correct on his birth certificate, but it's not correct on his baseball. Just, it's like, well, you know, time will tell, right? Time will tell it. Maybe this is the year he busts out of it. Maybe he does bust out of it. That would be the other point is, like, isn't this kind of the year? Yeah. No, we, we said that on the, the broadcast, this uh, this spring training, this particular season, is obviously critical for him, and and what they what they maybe want to do with him. No question. Yeah, because also it's not like you're going to fall back on. Well, I can still wait for the bat because his defense. I can wait for the bat for his athleticism. You can't say either of those things. So it's like he's here, and you're investing so much on the bat that at some point, as yes, this year, like. He's got to go. He can hit because if he can't hit, what what is his value? He's got to hit. He's got to hit. That's absolutely right. So this this is the this is the year for him. And as you said, you know, Jacob Wilson, uh, you got a lot of guys that are uh, that are going to be sorry, man. Well, and then that's where Hernandez, and we'll talk about it in the broadcast, playing third base. It's interesting, right? Yeah. Brad Harris. We saw him 
it's interesting because you know Elvis Diaz and Abraham Toro are not third baseman. Well, I mean, they're, they're, they're gonna they're gonna mix them out right now. We're, we don't have a we don't they have not established who's gonna be the starting third baseman. But you need to do that right now. That's what we do on Ace Cast. You need to establish who's playing third. That's your job. That's my job That's uh, to job. tell you who's going to play third yeah. base right we now. We need to know. Who's going to be the starting third base, but nobody does. Who's going to be the starts at third base? Who should? Um, right now, I'm going to say it's I, I, my prediction now, right now, is it's going to be, uh, I think it, it might be her name. I think it might be her name. I would either say right now, if we had to like put it like in a betting terms, I think the two favorites would be Hernandez and Diaz. Diaz probably is your favorite. Right under him, I think Hernandez is because I think Hernandez is proving to them we know how much they really Jordan like him. Uh, Jordan. Okay. Well, is Diaz is not a starting team. He can play there. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm going to predict, I'm going to say Hernandez is with him. All right. All right. All right. Uh, Commander, are you ready for know your – oh, wait, we've got hugs all around. Mark Kotze hugging Stephen Boat right now behind home plate. Darren Bush with the big hug for Stephen Boat. Obviously, uh, Mickey Morbido – well, Mickey Morbido's out there. Are you shocked? <laughs> I mean, he's a celebrity on the field. It's not a voter. It's, it's Mickey. I, I mean, don't. Mickey Morbido's out there hugging people. I mean – I mean, what, what, what this franchise, you're good friends with Stephen Vogt. What this franchise, the A's, mean to Stephen Vogt? I mean, he's family. He is family, no question about it. We talked about it yesterday, the fact that as soon as he saw the schedule come out, he goes, he told his wife, Alyssa, of course, of course we played the A's on opening day, of course. So, I mean, this organization means so much to him. He has so many friends. Uh, they are family. They're, that's a perfect way to put it. And, and this is really cool to see him on the field with Bushy and Kotze and and Aldo and everybody, it's, it's pretty neat. And also a special tribute to PR man Greg Korn back home here with the Guardians yeah. and the Indians. When I think of one of the great Guardians Indians of all time, our own Greg Korn, uh, on the field right now, I can see him. It's a, it's a special moment. Feller, Fossey, Korn, you know how it goes. That's actually really good. I completely forgot about Greg being being with Cleveland for the, the year he was there. Back so. home. Back home. Yeah. Well, it, it, I wonder if Cleveland gives him a tribute video when he goes back. <laughs> Make that happen. Are they going to do the Christian Pache? Thank you. Well, I guess I can't use the first question. Who is the uh, – which A's employee most recently worked for the Cleveland Guardians? So I got to take that one off. Uh, oh, just, was that uh, really – you had that on there? Uh, uh, if I had that on there, it's kind of funny, but I did not. It's just uh, – that's good. All right, so first one. Johnny, if you don't know this, you just walk off the set right now. Who was the first ever draft pick in Indian slash Guardians franchise history? Draft pick in Indian slash Guardian history. Ray, uh, Ray Fossey. Thank you, my God. You were getting fired. I was firing you if you didn't know that. If you didn't get this, John. Yeah, fired. You have no business being an A's employee if you don't know that. I hear you. I got you. I got All right. you. All right, so second one. Who did Dwayne Kuyper hit his only home run off of oh in his my career? God. I, 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 oh, my gosh. I do this Fellow oh big league God. broadcaster. He's what? Fellow big league broadcaster. Fellow big league broadcaster. Long man. time. Long time. On the south side of Chicago right now. What side? So, uh, south okay. side. Steve Stone. There you go. Here you go. Two, two for two. Two for two. Who was the last pitcher to win a World Series game for the Cleveland Indians? So it would have been against right, the Cubs. Right, right, right. For the Cleveland Indians. And he said they were up 3-1. So whoever won game four, I've got I'm no gonna, clue. I'm going to say I'm gonna say Kluber. Wow, three for three. Corey Kluber was the guy. <laughs> Johnny! Six innings, Corey Kluber won that game as the Guardians were up 3-1. And then, uh, as we know, they blew the lead and lost in game seven. Was not Corey. Trevor Bauer in the drone? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> How many number one overall picks have the Cleveland Guardians had in their franchise history? So not going one one. Uh, well, are you counting the one next year? Yes, we'll include that one. Uh, what? I don't know. You mean number one overall? Yeah, one one. Yeah. One one. I'm gonna say 
Two. The answer is one. It was it's this upcoming draft. Oh, <laughs> first time ever. The trick question. I was gonna say that's that. the trick question. Yeah. That's Bush League. All right, two more, real quick. Who did Stephen Vote hit his last career home run off of? Oh man, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> like who cares? I don't remember who he hit it off. Who did he hit it off? Who, who yeah. hit it again? I told yeah. you it was against the Angels. I told you guys wouldn't get it. it's Zach Weiss. Oh, that's right. The Angels. The, the Angels were the only team that used more players than the A's that year. Both yeah. were franchise records, right? Yes. All right, here you go. Last one because like, you guys got to get ready for the game. Who was the legendary broadcaster in the movie Major League? Well, Bob, you was the name in the, in, the, in the movie? There you go. That's a great Harry Doyle is his name in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I just want you to know that – the A's people went back into the dugout. Stephen Boat stayed behind home plate and was just talking and hugging Mickey Morabito. So as all the A's went back in, the last person to talk and hug with Stephen Boat was Mickey Morabito on the field. Uh, go, Got to win one for the Micker. <laughs> Does that shock anybody? No. He never wants to come on A's gas. He doesn't want to be on camera. Is always out in the middle of the field. And always a part of what's going on. Yeah. The great right. Mickey Morbido. Uh, I well, got to go. Here. He's still on the field as we're speaking. Well, Johnny, you did a nice job. Tomorrow we'll play your, the latest installment of Know Your Giants. So another. <laughs> another... <laughs> who is the latest giant who's now a Cardinal? <laughs> is it Brandon Crawford? <laughs> <laughs> He's from Pleasanton. Oh. All right, that's gonna do it. Great job, Johnny. Great job by Johnny today. Did he? Did he come all? Uh, just yeah. The only one he didn't get was the uh, the, the angel one. one. The angel one. That was a trick. That you weren't getting that. I wasn't gonna see if he. That was the angel pitcher. Uh, Zach Weiss was his name. Who? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's Bush League. All right, we want to thank Stephen Boat for stopping by the show today. What we had the interview from the Winter Range. Did you see that interview? It was special. Uh, we want to thank Tyler Soderstrom, Jacob Wilson. Great stuff. Our last A's cast live from the Valley of the Sun back in the Bay Area tomorrow. Coming up next is the A's and Guardians from Goodyear Ballpark here in Arizona. Thank you for watching A's Cast Live. Hey, Oakland A's fans, join your team this spring in Mesa. With nonstop flights direct from Oakland, there's never been a better time to head to the Southwest. Surrounded by the stunning Sonoran Desert, spring training fans know why Arizona is the perfect spring break escape. Miles of trails, shoreline, and sunshine combine for an unforgettable Arizona adventure. There's simply no shortage of things to do, see, and discover in Mesa. Get your visitor's guide at visitmesa.com. Nestled in the hills of San Jose, 